back again with another informative video got one for you today got a quick one for you today um as you can see by the thumbnail kind of have a gist of what i want to talk about um kind of want to delve into insulation <clears throat> the installation <clears throat> of insulation <clears throat> installing insulation and um kind of what i look for when i'm doing insulation inspection got to give you some pointers on um if you if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you have an, an addition added on to your house or you, you decide to do your own um, your own install as far as insulation is concerned, um, kind of go over some things to look for, some things that I, I look for when I'm doing an inspection. And um, we kind of kind of go from there. As always, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, you can uh, hit me up, shoot me an shoot me email, um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, um, so you can always get in contact with me if you need to, if you have any questions. So let's kind of get started. Okay, let's, let's get into what I look for when I'm doing a insulation inspection. Um, definitely after the, the roughs have passed, the electrical, mechanical, plumbing, and the framing has passed. Um, the next step is the insulation down here in Georgia. Um, down here in Georgia, we're under the 2015 energy code. We so, and with that, a, a couple things changed. Um, the the attic insulation now it went from an R30 to to an R38, um, and that's basically it, really. We um, in the walls are R R13. Up under the floor, if you have a crawl space or basement, uh, it's R19. Uh, like I said, in the attic, it's R38. Um, and that's basically it. Um, I, I definitely check for, to make sure that the, the insulation is cut and it fits that, that, that cavity. I also check for behind the, the outlets. Um, cause you don't want to leave in a void. You want this, this bat, this is a bat of insulation, R value of, of 13. You want that to be flush to the, to the sheathing as, as flush as possible. So you want that, that bat to be cut and fit exactly in as much as you can in, in, inside that, that cavity. Also, you also check for, like I said, uh, insulating behind the, the receptacle boxes. You don't. You don't want any void. You want everything to be flush, nice and smooth. Um, and also check for for insulating our foam ceiling around windows and doors. Um, and I can kind of show you. Because um, when you're installing new windows and doors, you typically have a gap around that around the framing, and you know we want to make sure that all that is sealed up around all windows and doors and any top plate penetrations we want those sealed up um, and with this particular home this one has a we have a attic platform um, down here in Georgia you are you're able to to install um, units air handling units up in the attic um, you can hear it in Georgia. You can install them up in the attic and down in the crawl space. Um, so that's sitting on the platform, and we want to make sure that the insulation under that is at the correct R value as well. Like I said, down here it just changed from R30 to R38. Um, this particular house that I, I did the inspection on, 
I had to fail it because it's, uh, as you can see, it's a, I'll flip it around. It's, a, it's R30. And um, like I said, down in attics, we require R38, we just, just changed. And also it had a couple of, of penetrations that were missed as well. But it's, it's critical that these are sealed up. And, and the reason why is say a fire got stuck. This is, this is a light switch box or switch box. If a fire got started in, in here, the fire got started, this wire got frayed some kind of way and the fire got started here. What you don't want to happen is, and there's, there's a, a certain amount of air in between, in between the wall, in between, in between, you know, the drawwall, you got drawwall here, then you got drawwall on the other side. And it's X amount of air in between that, that, that area, that concealed space. Eventually, if a fire got started here, it would extinguish out. The air would run out, it would extinguish out, hopefully, ideally. But if there's a penetration open, what could possibly happen is, and what will happen is, air from the attic, which is right here, will, will draft down through that penetration and keep that fire burning. And it'll burn that whole wall down. So what you want is, you want all the penetrations sealed. So let's say if a fire got started here, you know, right at that, that switch box, that the air in between, you know, those two pieces of drywall would eventually extinguish out and the air will run out. Because you need you need air to, to keep a fire burning. It would eventually extinguish out because the air would run out. You know, because we, we have sealed penetration. It, it, the, the, it can't access any more air other than what's in between those two pieces of drywall. But if we have open penetrations here, here, and a fire got started here at the at a receptacle box. That fire got started here. You know, we're talking behind the wall, fire got started. It would have access to all the air up in the attic because of these, these two holes right here. It would eventually draft down and it'll keep that fire burning. So that that's critical. Very, 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 very important. Um, and that's that's basically Basically, in a nutshell, to be honest, um, I'll come back later on the final. Check the insulation up and add it. Make sure it's R38. Make sure that the correct thickness, uh, R value 38. We need about about a 13 and a half, 14 inch depth of blown in insulation. I'll check the. In, in this house is on the crawl space. I'll check the insulation R value on the crawl down in the crawl space. We need an R19, and that's basically it. Um, you could you could do this yourself. You don't have to hire somebody to do it. You can go to the local hardware store, buy you some insulation. Make sure you buy the correct R value. Uh, check with your local builder, <clears throat> building department, wherever you are, what city, whatever state, city, local juris jurisdiction. Make sure you have the correct R value. You can buy it yourself. All you have to do is cut cut it to fit that the correct height and width of, of the cavity. You don't have to even staple it in. You can just pretty much. You know, this one is just, just lay, you just lay it in. Just lay it in, you know, lay it up against the wall. You don't want to compress it. Uh, make sure you foam seal behind the, any receptacle or light switch boxes. You don't want any voids. Um, and you can do, you too, and you can do it yourself. And make sure any penetrations that, that was done during the, the electrical rough are plumbing rough. Well, that's critical to plumbing. We have penetration for plumbing. These, these are water lines here. Those are water lines, hot and cold water lines. Any, any penetration top bottom plate, you want to be sealed up. And I also check for the presence of insulation baffles. Um, and what these are, these are pieces of cardboard that are used to shield off blown in insulation. Um, you, you put these, install these here in between the, the truss or in between your rafters. So they, they'll, they're pretty much they're just blocking off blown in insulation from clogging up your soffit vents. Your soffit vents are used to insulate, I'm sorry, soffit vents are used to ventilate your attic. A lot of times when those guys come in with those, those machines and they're, they're blowing in 
that loose feel insulation uh they tend to go that stuff tends to go everywhere and it and a lot of times it, it clogs up your soffit vents on on the exterior these are used to pretty much block that from happening stop that from happening and it also allows for ventilation as you can see at the top that's that's your ventilation coming up if, I, if you can see that that's your ventilation coming up from your soffit vents that particular piece of cardboard is used to block the loose field insulation from clogging that up. So I also check for the presence of those and um, I'll come back on the final to check for insulation under the floor, which is down here required. Um, it should be R19. I'm sorry, here's, here's one right here. Huh, it was one sitting on the floor. But this is called a insulation baffle. This is just a piece of cardboard, really. A piece of cardboard that you fold you fold the ends, you fold the ends here, and you, you, you use a staple to install them up in between the, the truss or your rafters. And like I said, they're used to block the loose fill insulation from clogging your soffit vents. You want to make sure those are installed as well. Um, and like I said, on a final inspection, when I come back to do a final, I check for the the loose fill insulation in the attic and the insulation on the floor which is R that should be R19 up on the floor I'll go in the crawl space get a flashlight and check and make sure we have the correct R value in the floor and I'll get up in the attic and make sure if it's if it's a bat it needs to be R38 if it's loose fill which a lot of times they they do do that down here um, I check for the thickness, how, how, I'm sorry, the depth of the loose field insulation. There should be insulation markers. Oh, that's another thing I should add. I check for insulation markers. Uh, they should have insulation markers. I check that on the final. Um, and I look at those and check for depth of loose field insulation. It should be down here. It should be like about a about 13 and a half inches, 13 and a half to 14 inches of depth of loose fill insulation. I check that and like I said, I'll go in the crawl space and check for our value under the floor. And that's really it for um, insulation. Um, if you guys got any questions, man, you can always hit me up. You got any comments? Um, I'm always available. I'm on Instagram. I'm on um, Facebook, um, I got email, <clears throat> you can get me if you need me. I hope you guys enjoyed this, you guys have a great day, and I am out of here. Take care.